Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. My GF cheated. I never let her forget. Part 2. The Revenge As a result, this is one of those vengeance tales that was only partially prepared. I knew I had to exact my vengeance on Lisa for what she had done to me, but I just kind of improvised as possibilities arose. My original good soul had perished on that chair on my birthday. All of my principles were thrown out the window. I had never cheated in a relationship, therefore I assumed I would never be cheated on. I know how stupid it is now, but that is what I thought at the time. I didn't care what collateral damage I created as long as my goal of inflicting as much pain on Lisa as possible was met. So I carried on with my new selfish outlook every day of my life. Later that week, I was sitting at my computer, scrolling through Facebook, when I came across the profile of one of her track teammates. That's when I had my first spiteful thought. I decided to try to get her colleagues to take the bait I was about to toss into the sea. Despite the fact that I didn't have evidence of her up with my colleagues, she was plainly attempting to conceal talks between them. So I decided to see how many individuals in my immediate vicinity I could passionately embrace. Fortunately, I had more alternatives than she had when she cheated on me. A men's basketball team is substantially bigger than a women's track squad. Also, much more attractive Lisa's colleague had a boyfriend, which I discovered on Facebook, but I reasoned, obviously everyone cheats, let's check if it's real. I then engage in a flirtatious social media dance with her. You know the one where I like a few of her pics and she likes a few of mine in return. I send her a text message and bam. A week later, she's in my bed at my residence. I then do something similar to her other comrades. All of them happen to be on her 4x4 relay squad. Two of the three females I passionately embraced had boyfriends and eventually cheated on them with me, which left me with a lot of mixed feelings. It massaged my bruised ego while simultaneously making me resentful and unhappy. Giving me one of those women aren't. None of them are faithful looks. This is such a common narrative of becoming a monster while battling monsters. In my messed up mentality, this became my go-to tactic since it achieved two things. It exposed a cheater, but more significantly, if they were willing to cheat on their partners, they would a be more covert about it, which meant the drama that would occur when it was revealed and b it helped me feel better about Lisa cheating since it demonstrated it wasn't my fault. Women were the source of the issue. I realize it's messed up, but that's what I thought at the time. I began to collect something from every female I up with, such as a bra, a pair of underwear, or some jewelry and so on. Not for any weird purpose, but this would come in handy later and was part of my strategy. Sometimes I didn't even have to trot. One of the girls left a pair of really distinct shoes. Lisa would recognize whose shoes they were. They belonged to the female Lisa's ex-boyfriend reconnected with after Lisa and him split up, which irritated her since she was her buddy. It would aggravate her even more if that same female had slept with both of her ex-boyfriends. I attempted to gather things that I knew Lisa would recognize, such as a sweatshirt from the women's track team with her teammate's name on it. After a while, I'd accumulated a boatload of. After a few months, one of Lisa's teammate's boyfriends found out about me and his girlfriend, and it set off a beautiful and dramatic chain of events with her and her teammates. As a result, they all found out about each other's promiscuity. The drama was colossal. It had become so nasty that even their coaches were called in. This gave me a sense of power in an evil but gratifying manner. I became enamored with the devastation I was wreaking. The most amazing aspect of it all was that the athletics PR staff had up enormous posters of me all around campus, advertising the following game the same week. They could be found everywhere. So Lisa and her pals had to see me all around campus every day as this drama erupted all around them. I felt like a victorious ruler. It was both wonderful and pitiful at the same time. Their coach then held a serious meeting with the compliance department and my team's coaches. My coaches laughed at her, stating this seems to be an internal problem but OP hasn't done anything criminal or violated any school regulation, so there is nothing we can do. The women's track coach was enraged by this. Their squad had disintegrated. Their national standing started to fall. Then Lisa's coach got in trouble for ripping down some of the smaller posters of me around campus in a fit of rage. Everything was fantastic. I kept adding gasoline to the flames. I was always posting images of myself with females smiling and being cheerful on Facebook and Instagram. But behind it all, 
I felt resentful. I was so far into my new thinking that I had forgotten who I used to be. A kind-hearted, mad youngster. I despised my former self because I had allowed some female emasculate me. Looking back, I was so full of self-pity that it was sad. However, no one knew since I seemed to be a cool man in public. There was even a girl on one of the sports teams on campus who claimed to be pregnant with my child after I pretended to like her, in the same way I pretended to like all of the other females on Lisa's team, and as soon as we passionately embraced, I moved on. It's a lengthy tale, but it turned out she wasn't pregnant, but the news or press that followed just served to pierce Lisa's heart more. I left a path of misled women and broken relationships in my wake. I feel horrible now but I didn't care at the time, since they were both at fault in my view, because they were cheating on their partners or sleeping with them. Friends' ex-girls quickly became tired of me. Plus, I was running out of possible targets. I was a terrible human being back then, and I was going after ladies who weren't even friends or on Lisa's track team, but were simply around her in everyday life. Her students, for example, as well as her own family. I even flirted with her sister, who was married with a child and nearly got away with it. She was down but her and Lisa's father found out and intervened, putting a stop to it all before we could do anything. As word spread among the family, her sister was shunned. I wanted Lisa to know I was following her about and continuously reminding her of her mistakes. This was all her fault in my opinion, and she brought this on herself. She should never have messed with me in such a way. Lisa was forced to take an extended medical leave due to the despair and mental health concerns she was suffering as a result of the circumstance. She was contemplating suicide. She was even put on medicine and had to lose a lot of weight. She started to seem really ill. The whole situation was tormenting her, and the more she suffered, the better I felt. At this time, I'd already done more harm to myself than she had to me, but I'd gotten to the sensation of power. I spent no time dealing with my own feelings or moving on from what had transpired. All I wanted was more vengeance and I couldn't stop myself. Lisa eventually gets a hold of me after weeks of ignoring her messages and phone calls by showing up unexpectedly late at night at my place. She came there to pick up some belongings she had left behind from her previous residence to take home with her. She was a local, and her parents lived nearby. She was still on medical leave and no longer lived on campus, but with her parents. I told her I would transport her belongings to her parents' home that weekend, but I couldn't allow her in since I had company, which I did but it wasn't one of her teammates or pals. I then proceeded to collect all of the stuff I had gathered from all of the females over the course of many weeks. There were maybe eight or nine items from various females, including her teammates, and they put their goods in with leases into large black garbage bags. I delivered the bags to her residence and then contacted Lisa's father. I informed him that I had placed her belongings on his doorstep and that I had informed his wicked daughter. Lisa's father and I got along well, and even supported me when Lisa and I split up. But after all of these experiences, he clearly had a poor view of me. I receive a call from Lisa 15 minutes after I hang up with her father. I respond because I'm curious about her response to seeing all of this other female's trash mixed up with hers. She couldn't stop weeping. It sounded like that crazy half-crying, half-mumbling thing people do. She wasn't even upset, only pleading with me to point to end my tyranny. I just grinned and basked in the ecstasy of hearing. Her anguish. I said, why were there other men involved in our relationship? You incorporated them into our relationship in the same way that I included other ladies into your stuff. It's the ideal sarcastic metaphor. At the time, I thought it sounded great and was really pleased to myself. Facepalm. Lisa was sure I was the one cheating on her since I was usually out of town, according to one of Lisa's friends, who knew she was cheating on me throughout our relationship. This doesn't make sense since I was out of town for basketball which is a perfectly legitimate explanation, not haphazardly on my own will. My timetable was actually available on the school's website. I remained in touch with her while I was away, but I couldn't be on my phone during practice or team meetings. But I assumed she didn't have the logic in her head to figure this out. I'm guessing it's simply an explanation she concocted to cover up her concerns about the entire thing or to keep her face in front of others who knew she was cheating. Months pass, Lisa returns to school after being on medical leave, and we run into each other in the physical therapy center in our athletic facilities building. This presents me with another another chance. I hadn't done anything to injure her in a long time, but I was still thirsty for revenge. I then act as though I wish to renew our relationship. She is wary at first, but after about a week, she bites. We begin to repair our friendship. 
We've been dating for about a month, but I wouldn't call it a relationship. I restrict her from having any male friends, and she is not permitted to go out and party with her girlfriends. I also need constant access to all of her accounts and her whereabouts. It resembled a hostage scenario. It provided me with a feeling of control. Meanwhile, I'm not being too loyal. This was always my intention. Finally, she discovers my affair with a girl in one of her courses, and we have a violent breakup. I told her that she actually remembers what it was like to be me when we were dating. I felt victorious again and again. It was simply another opportunity to injure her, and I took it. Following this, we don't communicate for years. I finish university and relocate to Central America. She contacts me when I'm there, roughly a year after I relocated and about two years after our last conversation. My life has devolved into that of a true degenerate at this point. I was consuming enormous quantities of narcotics on a regular basis, and I spent around 75% of my time participating in illegal or criminal activities. But I still blame her for my being the evil soul that I was and for refusing to accept responsibility for my bitter, immoral personality. I hadn't had another relationship since she and had always had problems since I couldn't trust a woman in any form. Even though it had been years, I regarded her texting me as yet another chance to damage her. We start talking as friends and even flirt with one other on Facebook Messenger. To be sure, there are several nations, states, and an ocean between us at this time. I had planned a visit to my former institution to see some pals. But what I told her was different. I told her I was returning to the city for a new job I had recently been given. We agreed to meet up when I returned to see whether there is anything worth salvaging between us. I put on my finest acting hat and seemed to have put our history behind us but I'm still as furious as I was years ago. She is in her last year at university, and I am returning to the United States. When I arrive, I meet Lisa in a coffee shop. We stay up all night together. From her perspective, it seems that we have moved beyond our disagreements and what transpired. We may be able to sort things out. However, like I have said, I will not be returning. I'll just be here for two nights. She is unaware of this. After up a few times and spending two days together, I pack my belongings and board a plane back to Central America without telling her anything about my departure. I blocked her on all of my social media platforms and contact channels. This time, all I could think about was what happened to her when I vanished after she believed I had moved back and was ready to give our relationship another go. This time, though, it wasn't as gratifying as my past vengeance schemes. Every year, my drug habit and lifestyle deteriorated. Three years later, I was hospitalized and almost died as a result of my long-term drug usage. I was never sober for a complete 24 hours following that day on the menstruation calendar. Returning the gaze. Regardless of how much anguish I may have given her with my vindictive existence, my new persona, which had replaced my old one, was contaminated with a wicked spirit at heart. I honestly believe that my acts caused more damage to myself and lead me down a path where I had no morals. Though I spent the most of my narrative telling everyone about how I kept getting vengeance on my ex for cheating on me, as wonderful as it was, I wish I had spent an equal amount of time mending myself from the occurrence. If anybody reading this is suffering from the agony of infidelity, a good revenge narrative may provide some solace, but I hope you don't make the same mistake I made. Rather, devote more effort to mending and moving on from your pain. You will not be healed by vengeance. It will be a distinct trip but it may divert your attention away from putting yourself back together. Fortunately, I became clean and have been sober for almost four years. I'd even had a two-year-old female buddy cheat on me before I became clean, but I didn't get even. I spent my time recuperating. I transformed and became only concerned with myself, which was much more rewarding than the vengeance I exacted on Lisa for cheating on me. Now, I've been married to a sober lady for over two years and wow, do I have a nice life. I have a fantasy job and a fantasy marriage. Thank you to everyone who took the time to read this. Sorry if it wasn't well written. I seldom write like much, but I'd never recounted the whole tale in depth before, and I learned a lot by writing it. The main thing I want to gain out of this is to share my experiences doing bad things but getting such a gratifying sensation from it that it's nearly addicting, and transforming from a basically decent person to a really dark nasty one. People have bad periods, of course, but I feel like my personality and mentality have never been the same since that incident. I'm looking forward to hearing from anybody who is willing to read this nonsense. Commenters writing TLDR. In college, OP dated Lisa, 
a woman a few years his junior. Lisa maintained a period tracker and kept note of time she had unprotected. When filming there for girlfriend who had fallen asleep, OP discovered she had had unprotected with at least four males since they started dating. OP roommate evicted her. OP resolved to exact his vengeance. This began with her all three of her relay teammates, track team, which resulted in the team crashing. They both had boyfriends, so OP used this as fuel to claim that it is the women who are the issue, not him. At this point, OP begins to go down the rabbit hole of drugs and drink. This went on for a long time, and OP began collecting items from ladies that might be identified by Lisa for his scheme. He would target, his words, ladies close to Lisa on purpose, so that the drama would be bigger, and he would have more ammo to damage her. Lisa took a mental health vacation from despair and went to OP home to beg for her belongings back. He carried it to her parents and filled it with everything he had been accumulating. He relished the fact that she had contact and weeping. Months later, they meet into one other at PT, and he persuades her to give it another chance, despite the fact that she knows it's all a game. Holds her hostage with no boyfriends, no parties, no going out, all while cheating. They finally part ways. Years later, OP is approached by Lisa, who informs him that he will be returning to their nation for a job. In real life, he's coming on a two-day visit, and essentially catfishes her into dating him again. They be up and stay out the whole time. He then packs his belongings and goes, never to harm her again. After this OP gets into trouble with drugs and alcohol, finds himself in the hospital, and has another girlfriend cheat on him. He did not exact retaliation on her. OP is now married, has a nice career and has, supposedly, been clean for some time. He is also aware of how hazardous everything is. That, I believe, sums it up. Edit 1. Hello, everyone. It's been a little over 100 days since I wrote this, and I'm still amazed at how many people read it. I appreciate all of the comments, even if they were a bit of a mixed bag. It's expanded to Facebook and YouTube, among other places, and it's fascinating to see how different the feeling is on each of those networks. Have you apologized or spoken to Lisa after the events in this story? Is one of the most frequent requests I've received. No, it does not. No, not yet. However, I intend to do so. She's on a lengthy list of changes I've been working on for years. It seems that I will return to her city sometime next year, and I'll contact her then. I know many of you are asking me not to, but I have discussed this with my sponsor, therapist, and mentors, and the conclusion is to apologize for my behavior which I believe is necessary. Also, a lot of comments in which people totally misunderstand the purpose of the story's narrative and feel the need to act as my therapist or something, telling me how I should have done this or that over a decade ago, which was not the point. It's apparent how I responded, but that's not what this was about. This was about objective reflection. And as I indicated in my post, I've gone back into dating after a long break from Lisa. And although most of my girlfriends and relationships Following Lisa were nice, I was cheated on again in a manner with one of them, and was far more distressing than the narrative I wrote with Lisa, but I have learned from Lisa's experience and chose not to seek vengeance and instead just walked away. That is when I ultimately became clean, which led to the life I currently enjoy. And I'm thinking of producing a post to illustrate the tale, since I ended up doing the healthier thing even though I was wounded more more than with Lisa. The sheer number of men who reached out to me on here, sharing their own stories of infidelity and drug abuse, either asking for advice or just to share their own emotions and stories, completely surprised me and honestly filled my heart with empathy. And I felt connected to people dealing with the same things I did back then, and it was so fulfilling to have the opportunity to help these men deal with their trauma in healthy ways than I originally did. But regardless of how different your comments are, I appreciate them all. However, I believe that all of the following arguments have some validity.